Welcome back to the Gearhead Fellowship channel where we do car modifications and check to see how well the improvements are on the vehicles. Today we're deep into our 204 hour transmission rebuild. If you like that kind of thing or any other car modifications to check to see performance, consider subscribing, check out the video, and thanks for joining us. Today we're into the input shaft, fourth clutch, and planetary assemblies. Let's get started. All right, folks, now if you remember, we're into our 204R rebuild process, and if you remember this chart layout of all the different parts and pieces that are in the 204R transmission, uh, we've been breaking it down by section and working on it. We've already taken care of the output shaft and the uh, rear and front planetary assemblies, the low reverse clutch housing system. Um, we've already taken care of the center, uh, well, the center section in the direct drum and the forward drum clutch assemblies, uh, pistons for those and all that. Uh, we've already dealt with the pump, and today we're going to be working on the input shaft section, fourth clutch, piston, overrun drum, all the way through the overdrive planet. So that's, that's up here, the input shaft, and it's going all the way through here, uh, down into the, uh, uh, overdrive planet and ring gear assembly so that's the section we're going to be working on today this should be the last major section in the transmission rebuild process and from there we're going to be checking tolerances and putting everything back into case so we've got the input shaft and fourth clutch assembly out this is the way it came out of the transmission and we haven't torn it down yet to really look for any uh, damage on parts but everything seems to be in decent shape again we're going to be doing upgrades on this system we're going with the billet input shaft we're going to be rebuilding the uh, the overrun drum assembly. I uh, got a billet uh, fourth uh, planetary uh, overdrive planetary, I should say, and then a billet ring gear uh, uh, assembly, which is this is the one that came out of there. So these parts are the ones that came out. We'll disassemble that um, and rebuild what we've got and add the new parts to it. Now we're starting to prep the turbine or input shaft uh, for the rebuild, and this is an aftermarket input shaft. This is an all billet. Uh, I think it's 4340 steel input shaft good for that thousand horsepower we're looking for and one of the immediate upgrades that we're going to do to this is we're going to be instead of installing the scarf cut seal rings on the uh, shaft in these three locations we're going to use solid seal rings so it all came with the rebuild kit uh, uh, once again I think I touched on this before in the last video but these scarf cut seal rings you can see they split uh, to make it really easy to install but that means they also are inherently going to leak at least a little bit. And we want to try to retain all the pressure we possibly can for maximum performance. So we're going to be using these solid seal rings. They're harder to install, but worth the effort. So we'll take those, we'll install them in those locations now on the input. So here we have some of the parts for the uh, fourth carrier assembly uh, that we're upgrading to. We've got the original input shaft and the original fourth carrier assembly, and I'll point out some differences there. And we've got our new fourth carrier assembly, the billet unit, along with the billet input shaft. <coughs> so the biggest thing you can see, and it's somewhat obvious, when you look down inside these two, you'll notice, let me get the light underneath this a little bit better. Here you've got, on the right-hand side, you got the OEM fourth carrier, and on the left-hand side, you've got the all-billet steel re uh, uh, upgraded uh, fourth carrier and, and the center section down here where the input shaft keys into it is much thicker on the new unit versus the old unit so it's got a lot more strength here to prevent stripping or anything like that if you flip them over you can see from the back side uh, there's obvious differences where the OEM one has got a retaining ring and you can actually pull it apart this one has actually been retained down and welded together and so it's a much stronger unit and it's transferring the power remember from the input which is going into your torque converter into the transmission so even though it's not just fourth gear this is also transferring power down first second third gears as well so you want to make sure that this isn't the weak link in the transmission we got the overrun drum all rebuilt along with the uh, sun gear and the sprag assembly all ready to go and this then you take the the input and it'll key down into there um, and you got let me see if I can get it down into there a little twisting and it'll get into place and as that's down on there you can see that this uh, 
when it gets all the way down in there it sits flush we've got new uh, frictions and steels down inside the uh, overrun housing um, and with the sprag assembly in there and the overrun clutch basically it allows rotation uh, away from the drum counterclockwise at least in this perspective you can see it will rotate this way but it will not rotate the other way and that's what that sprag's doing so this unit then uh, we, we go ahead and insert the input shaft into here and then that's how that's how it would be done Let's see so now we've got our input shaft or billet input shaft along with our uh, billet overdrive fourth carrier along with the overrun drum and clutch pack all assembled uh, snap rings in one of the things you got to look out for on these uh, transmissions that have been rebuilt is the snap rings see if they're getting sloppy and whatnot so the snap ring is uh, fitting nice and tight on that new input shaft along with the bullet carrier so everything looks good there and the last step to the, to the whole process is actually to take your um, your potential play clearance here in between the snap ring and the back of the housing as it may itch back and forth and record that number uh, for final assembly to uh, to totally calculate your forward thrust uh, clearance so this is a, a section that could be moved around and right now it looks like we're at about 33 thousandths uh, gap right there. And so we'll record that number and keep it uh, for final assembly in setting up the proper thrust washer behind the pump. Thanks for joining us today as we were looking at that billet input shaft along with the overrun uh, clutch piston assembly uh, and the overdrive fourth carrier hopefully you enjoyed it and it was informative and it helped you out maybe with your transmission rebuild or other upgrades you're doing and uh, if you like it go ahead and uh, like the video subscribe to the channel we're going to have other videos coming up as we finalize putting the transmission together testing out everything and then can't wait to get it in the car and get this thing on the road again all right take it easy